I have a, just a, 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 few, a couple questions here. Um, uh, if we were, if we are source energy on the leading edge of thought, and uh, we are at the point of new creation that expands the universe even further, can we intend to evolve into fully blended beings in this body, um, going between or across between both the physical and non-physical, um, thus taking the, thus evolving the universe even further? And in my quite, uh, uh, sorry to, um, basically it's, it's like, um, to clarify, it's kind of like Abraham, being Abraham, but being able to go between the physical and the non-physical, cutting out the croaking altogether, evolving to that point. Is that possible? Well, we have to say that anything that this time-space reality inspires from you, yes, you, you can create it. If you can desire it from where you stand, you can create it. There are some things that we want to clarify about that. Okay. We started to jump in, and you were wise to stop us when you did, because okay. we, start, we started to jump in to say to you that, in fact, all of you did come forth with the intention that you would be source in physical bodies. And you all believed, knew, that you had the capacity to expand your desire and to catch up with it and to expand your desire and catch up with it. Not one of you said, I'll go forth and find a way to keep myself separated from who I really am. You all expected to keep up with it and none of you said, and I'll go forth and I'll expand and expand and expand and I'll hold myself apart and apart and apart and when I croak I'll catch up. Nobody said that either. You all expected to do a good job, a better job than you're doing, of utilizing your own guidance system. Mm -hmm. Be and what has changed, the, the thing that makes that not happen for all of you and easily, the thing that is keeping that from happening is that you've sort of subverted your own guidance system and replaced it with trying to please other people. Mm -hmm. If you were really as naturally selfish as you are, meaning wanting to feel good, you just wouldn't put up with those discordant thoughts long enough to separate yourself from your own expansion. Okay. So, having said that, then the next part will be easier for you to hear. You don't, from non-physical, intend to come forth into a physical body and stay in that physical body for forever or for an expanded period of time because you adore so much the fresh new perspectives that the new birth experience provides. Okay. It, uh, uh, you may notice that, and it sort of speaks to why you keep hearing about the cat on the recordings. As much as you live in your now, you cannot help but become a part of what your now is. It's just, in other words, the, the longer you live, the more what is, is part of your vibration. So it really takes strong focus to focus yourself beyond what is. And it's much easier to do when you're fresh and new, right. and you don't have this basis of life through which you identify yourself. But the longer you live, the more you identify yourself as this personality that you know as you, and the more you identify yourself as the personality you know as you, the more reluctant you are to move on to the being that you are becoming. Don't you love knowing that? Isn't that good? So, therefore, you're eager for the new perspectives. And the reason that, from your non-physical perspective, you don't see jumping into a whole new experience as the arduous task that some of you see it as. Even Esther will say, Abraham, I really like knowing what I know, and I'm not too keen on coming back and not remembering all of this. And we say, oh, you'll remember it when you're born. Those around you will just uh, try, not meaning f not doing it on purpose, but they will dissuade you from what you know when you're born. But look at all the breadcrumbs you're leaving along the trail. Look at, look at how this time-space reality is coming into awareness of all of this. So that each of you now, as you are born and born and born, you have much more access to information that reminds you of who you are. Much more conversation about your emotions and what they mean. M many more people joyfully living out there on that edge. Not so many deliberately turning and paddling upstream. Many more floating downstream on rivers of hope and so on. Great. Okay. Yeah, that was perfect because it was kind of just a clarification yes. of what I thought I knew you would tell me. <laughs> so, you're always knew, in my head answering my questions. I knew what you knew and you knew what I so. knew and I'm, we're all glad that we all knew. Right? Yeah. Um, I also, um, my girlfriend and I have a question about, um, we, we really came in Abraham full force pro, uh, about a year and a half ago and um, kind of that whole 
all hell breaking loose type of thing has really happened to us, but in a very a good way. And you you talk a lot about um, meaning meaning we are now aware of all kinds of things that are in our vibrational escrow, and now we're aware of them. We're less tolerant of not being up to speed with them. So the controversy within our beings is more keen. We are more aware of it, but the fact that we know what to do about it is not really a problem. We're just in the closing the gap phase. Correct. We thought that's what you meant. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> That's why I like you. It's, uh, uh, so I think um, kind of our thing is in, in, a, in um, learning the processes and really trying to um, go with that. I, I, you always use the um, Jerry and Esther going from um, their house to San, going to San Diego, and, and you know they never turn around in the desert. You know. Um, because the journey is understandable, so they don't get lost in that particular journey. Right. And uh, uh, so our, our thing is um, kind of when you feel like you're on the verge of it and you've never made that full journey before, um, but you feel like you're just outside San Diego, <laughs> how do you um, kind of keep, keep that... You do, I don't I, I keep that question. momentum going to really bring you into that, especially when you've never made that journey fully before. Well, just think about the difference. So the analogy that he's using is that Jerry and Esther are traveling from Phoenix to San Diego, and they don't get out in the middle of the desert and get all frustrated that they're not yet in San Diego and lose their bearings and turn around and go back to Phoenix. So they go Phoenix, Yuma, Phoenix, Yuma, Phoenix, Yuma, Phoenix, Yuma, and then they complain that San Diego is an impossible dream, that it's incurable. And that doesn't happen because they understand that journey. And so... The same thing, that's the reason we tell that story. Feel for the message in the story. The journey is understandable, so you have to find a way to make the journey from wherever you're going without something that you want to this destination that contains what you want. How can you make where you're going more believable to you? Okay. And so, and the analogy is such a good one because it all depends on where you're looking. If you're standing out there in the desert and you're looking back at Phoenix, your vibrational match to what you don't want. If you're standing out there in the desert and you're looking towards San Diego, now you're a vibrational match to what you do want. So it's about keeping your eye on where you're going. But today we've taken it even further. Today we're talking about, ooh, this vibrational escrow. This vibrational escrow that you have built piece by piece, idea by idea, preference by preference, desire by desire. And it's reality. It is a vibrational reality. And as you tell that story more than you tell this story, it's just, it really is which story gets more air time. Do we talk more about what's coming or do we talk more about what is? Are we more anticipating or complaining? Are we more appreciating or defending? In other words, it really is about just making a determination that you're going to tell this story. And for a long time we've been talking about the art of allowing and we've really been doing the best sales job ever about helping you trying to help you to understand that your emotions really matter and because we've noticed as we try to teach you to think about what's in your vibrational escrow rather than to think about what's happening many of you say but what's happening is so compelling it's so in my face, there's something, it's odd, don't, oh, here we go to a new place again. Isn't it, let's consider this, this is really a good thing to consider. So here's this vibrational escrow, and we think that we have been demonstrating mightily the power of vibrational escrow, don't you? Yes. Can't you feel it? Especially when we focus on it and tell you about it. And then here's what's going on in your own life experience. There's this and there's this. <laughs> So why does this seem so real to you? Because it's manifested. So you're letting this pipsqueaky little thing that doesn't mean diddly squat, you're letting it take precedence over this simply because this has manifested and you can see it and smell it and taste and touch in here. In other words, you're letting your physical sensations of what you're interpreting make it seem way, 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 way bigger 
when this is what's way, 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 way bigger, you see. And that's why we're saying you have to feel it. You have to get inside the feeling place of this. You have to find some way to make yourself feel it. So you'll say things to yourself like, well, what does that feel like? Well, it feels like security and it feels like well-being and it, it feels like humor and it feels like well-being. It feels like well-being. <laughs> it, 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 it's not always easy to find a lot of descriptive words, but it feels like the, the, the best of the feelings that I've had. And so the way you quantify your journey and make it understandable is by saying, I'm going to go where I feel the best. But before you can make any comparison, you have to have two points of vibration that are active within you. So the vibrational e escrow, that's why what you said was so keen. As you said, we're sort of having that experience where all hell is breaking loose. And you know what that is? That's the sensation of consciously activating your awareness of your own vibrational escrow at the same time that you've got consciously activated your awareness of where you stand. So that both vibrations are active within you and you can feel yourself being, you can feel the, the tug of war between them. And so, and when that happens, when, when once you're there, that means you can feel viscerally thoughts that don't feel so good, thoughts that feel better, thoughts that don't feel so good, thoughts that feel better. So now your guidance system can be kicked into high gear and now you can make some comprehensive decisions. And that's why what we mean by quantifying your journey. Now you've got guidance. Now you can tell the difference. If, if someone called you on the telephone and said, hello, you don't know me. I'm just calling to tell you I will never call you again. <laughs> You would say, that would be all right with me. <laughs> Somebody you really care about tells you that, then you have a different response to it. So the more you think about what you want and the more you activate your awareness of these two vibrations, then the keener your guidance is. And at first, the more rough the waters feel. But at least you can tell when you're headed upstream and when you're headed downstream. Now, your journey has become quantifiable. Now, you can tell what you're doing. Now, you're not just out there bobbing on a raging sea like a cork that has no control. Now, you're in charge again. It's delicious. Yeah, we would far rather see you in angst because what you want and what you've got are different and what you're dominantly giving your attention to is different from what you want but you're aware of what you want so you're feeling the discord than that you've lulled yourself into a sense of complacency where you're not aware of what you're feeling. We'd far rather that your emotions be activated because that's the only way your journey can be quantified. And then we say, but we don't have to worry about that for any of you because if you've got some discord going on, which is what resistance is you not keeping up with you and you're not aware of it so you don't pay attention to your emotions and do something about shifting the vibration don't worry it will get bigger and, it does. and if you still don't do something about it don't worry it will get bigger because you cannot step back from who life has caused you to become you just you just can't step back from it that's great it is great something more I just have one more kind of I hope it's a quick answer but um, <laughs> I don't it, mean rarely, that, it rarely is. I know with you. You're, you're, you're good, though. Um, the, the year 2012 has um, a lot of um, vibrational things, especially in like the metaphysical community, about what that date is. Um, like the Mayan calendar ends then. And um, everybody, I, I'm just kind of curious uh, if you could possibly add some clarification if there is I mean it does that date have anything yes, to do with really important with the big vibration shift <laughs> is it different than 2013 or is it just like they're all the same you know we are going to have fun with that that it's the year before 2013 and okay. it's the year after 2011 which makes it uniquely its very own year but <laughs> We, we want to. We really, we really want to speak to why these things keep coming up because there's the harmonic convergence, and then there's the Y2K, and and then there's the second coming, and then there's, in other words, there's always something, and we want, and we want to talk about why that is, and we think we can give it to you here easily. You're really going to get this. Okay. We talked earlier today about the difference between inspiration and motivation. 
and humans just keep picking these false endings to poke at themselves for motivation's sake. Gotcha. That's really what that is always about.